were, were you guys like assigned with like a platoon of engineers or anything like that to help you? No, like, man. Together? We had one guy in my unit that used to be an electrician. That's like as close as we got to engineers. And then when we needed vehicles, I wrote about this in the yeah. book. We didn't have any guys that had vehicle background. We had one guy who um, was an auto mechanic and one guy who was a carjacker, you know, in a past life. And that's how we got vehicles up and running. We went down into a basement and hot wired some SUVs and it was like a scene out of the 18. We were just, you know, chopping them up and putting gun holes in the top and trying to make um, vehicles that we could use to patrol in. But I think the, the innovation of like the average soldier was really impressive. You know, I think that kind of gets lost in, in, in the mix a little bit. That, the soldiers and Marines are on the ground every day trying to make the most out of a pretty shitty situation. War. So if we're spending a lot of money on the war, and we don't even have the amount of troops we're supposed to have in there, how is it that we don't have enough equipment for our soldiers? I think there, there's a ton of waste, there's a ton of fraud, and there's a serious lack of oversight. Basically, you know, we've given um, the President and the Department of Defense a blank check, and, and we haven't kept them in check. So now you've got tons of money that's been wasted, billions of dollars that they don't even know where they went. Billions of dollars in Iraq are just missing because they couldn't keep track of it. Um, and then you've got companies like Halliburton and KBR and, and Blackwater and these other um, private contracting firms that are making tens of millions of dollars uh, off the war. And I think what's happened is the, the president and, and his leadership team moved our country and moved our military toward a prioritization of cool gee whiz gadgetry and laser-guided missiles and $50 million jets, but they forgot about the most important piece of your military, which is that, that guy or girl standing on the corner. That person needs to be well-equipped and well-trained, and, and there is no amount of money that is wasted on, on an individual soldier, because it's not some fancy laser-guided missile system that's gonna win over a neighborhood in Baghdad. It's gonna be a kid from the Bronx or a kid from Texas who works with people. And I think that you know all that money could have been better spent, not just on equipment, but on, for example, lingual training. If I had somebody in my unit that spoke Arabic, that would have been so much more beneficial than any cool gadget they could have given me. Um, but I think fundamentally they didn't prioritize the individual, and they didn't understand the culture, and they didn't understand what kind of fight we were gonna be waging. It's not this, this epic battle of tanks on some open field. It's, it's like a shark tank. It's like gangs in New York or something else. It's much more complex.